Hi everyone, in this video we are going to introduce the Uncode Grid System and how to work with it. Grid System is the base of every layout. Thanks to the rows and columns options of Uncode, you will be able to create every kind of layout, from the simplest to the most advanced. The Uncode Grid System's conceptual design was inspired by popular frameworks like Bootstrap, and it uses a similar modular approach. It consists of an advanced responsive grid based on 12 columns with advanced settings. It can be boxed or fluid full width. The grid system uses rows and columns to house contents. Rows and columns elements are at the very core of the page builder, and they have dozens of options like the vertical alignment, equal heights options, custom gap, padding, borders and shadow, off-grid options, and so on. Let's activate the front-end editor and see how it works. Let's start by adding the base element of each layout, the row. Rows are the primary containers, and they are used to create horizontal groups of columns. It's possible to choose the number of internal columns and create all possible combinations based on 12 subdivisions. For now, let's create a simple row with three columns. Rows and columns controls work together. They're grouped together and are positioned at the beginning of each column. You can switch between the row and column controls by expanding them with a simple click on the small arrow icon. Let's save the page and see how the rows are represented with the backend editor. Here we are in the backend builder, and we can see the base row with three columns created with a front end editor. Rows controls are positioned to the left of every row. By pressing the pen icon, you can open the specific settings, while columns controls are at the bottom of each column. When you use the page builder in the backend mode, the view is much more schematic, and this can help when drafting layouts. Let's get back to the front end editor. Now that we have three columns, we need to create some content. So let's insert some simple modules into each row. I insert a heading module and I modify the main text. I insert a text block. And I insert a button. OK, now that we have our first column contents, for convenience, I clone modules with the clone functionality and I accelerate the video so as not to lose the point of the speech on the grid system. I slightly modify the contents of the three columns so as to have a little bit of variation Here we are. Now that we're ready, let's explore some options. In the tab aspect, there are general options for the appearance of the row. Here there are the setting to define the width of the row container or the content of the row. With the content width, it's possible to modify the content of the row to be full width. With the height option, it's possible to adjust the row height in percentage relative to the height of the viewport. This option is widely used when creating headers or when you want to have a fluid row where the height is independent of the content. Let's give it a try. Pretty cool, but leave this setting unchanged for now. Then there's the row padding controls which allows us to modify the space that the row leaves on the right and left and above and below. Let's increase the top and bottom padding in this example. That's it. In the Style tab, there is the Background Color section. We apply a grey tone that helps us to better identify the row in this video. 
Since we're losing the contrast and it's difficult now that we're using a background to identify the grid, let's pause the row options for a moment and add a white background to each column so we can better identify the columns. So, I open the settings of each column and in the style tab, I add a white background color. Don't worry because we will come back to these options when we'll check the columns detail. That is it for now. Our columns have a white background and they are easily identifiable. Let's continue the exploration of the rows options. We left with the background color option in the style tab. In the style tab, it's also possible to add a background image to the row. Here's the image. Let's insert and save the settings. Here we are. It's also possible to apply some effects to the background image, like the parallax. Parallax is a scrolling technique where the background images move slower than the foreground, and it's used to create an illusion of depth. Note that when you use this option, the background image is slightly enlarged to permit it to move inside the row and create the movement effect. Next, there is the possibility to add a colored overlay to contrast the background image with the content. I activate it, I choose a solid color, and then I can adjust the opacity. I think 25% can be good. Here it is. Next, we have the overlay blend mode, thanks to which we can blend the background image with the overlay color. Let's try, for example, overlay, color dodge, or soft light. Here we use soft light. Remember that if needed, you can change the workspace display mode. So, I switch from the side toolbar to the top toolbar. Perfect. When in this mode, you can move the window with the controls to the position you prefer. I continue with the side toolbar that allows us to not have the settings window above the layout. Even if I often use the top toolbar when making layouts, maybe for the tutorial it's better. Just remember that you also have this display option. Let's get back to the row settings. In the columns tab, there are options that influence the behavior of the internal columns, such as the equal height. That makes each column the same height, and the columns gap that modifies the gap between the columns. Let's try the equal height. Thanks to this option, the columns can have the same height, and obviously it's the one with the highest column. The column gap instead defines the space that is left from one column to another. I'm going to try a double spacing. Let's try one pixel gap and a half spacing. Let's use half spacing. Thanks to the combinations of these options, you can create fascinating equal heights grids layouts, such as some you can see in our demo. In the row settings, there are many other options, such as the custom tab, the off-grid settings, that is useful for creating out-of-the-grid layouts, the shape dividers, that are useful for creating attractive and unique section separators, the responsive settings, extras, and the consent tab, if the privacy plugin is active. We dedicate specific tutorial videos to some of these advanced features. For the time being, we continue to focus on the basics of the grid system. So let's explore the column options. Columns are the effective containers in which to place your content. Let's explore some column settings. We can use this last column to make our examples, so I open its settings. In the Aspect tab, there are some important settings for the general appearance of the column. The column width is used to restrict the width of the internal contents. It can be set in pixel or percentage. For example, if I set 65%, we see that the content occupies 65% of the width of the column. With the horizontal position, 
it's possible to specify the horizontal position of the content if you have decreased the width value. Let's leave the default settings for now, since these are more useful when you only have one big column and you want to restrict the contents. Then there is the vertical alignment that can be middle, top, or bottom. Let's do some tests. For example, we set middle and we see how the content is positioned at the middle of the available space. Or use bottom to vertical align the contents at the bottom. Remember that this option is widely used, especially in headers or whenever you have a fluid row and want to center content vertically. For example, in this header, the main column holding the contents has the vertical alignment set to middle. The text alignment, as the name suggests, is responsible for aligning the text within the column. We can try, for example, to align this text to the center. The inner vertical spacing control is responsible for the inner vertical spacing between elements inside the column. For example, let's increase this value, or decrease it, and see how the space between the title, the text, and the button changes. The custom padding option adds padding around the content. For example, let's test a double padding. That's it. In the Style tab, the first option is Skins. We have already dedicated a video to Skins, so if you haven't seen it, I suggest you to check it. Skins are settings that allow you to switch your text and elements color in accordance with the background to ensure optimal contrast with minimal effort. For example, let's apply a dark background. At this time, the texts are not readable. So, let's set the dark skin and as if by magic, all the elements inside the column change their color, from heading to text to the button. Thanks to the font family option, it's possible, if necessary, to apply a specific font family from the ones we have imported to the column. Note that the font family of the headings and of the buttons are not affected by this option. That refers only to the plain text and normal elements. The overlay options are pretty much similar to those seen for row and are intuitive. So let's leave them for now. In the column settings, there are the other useful tabs, such as the custom tab, where you can set a custom padding or create a border around the column. This is quite intuitive. I changed the display mode of the page builder so we can see all the tabs. The off-grid options give you the ability to move a column out of its natural grid position. For example, I move our column using the Shift X axis option and the Shift Y axis. Here we have an off-grid position and the column comes out of its natural grid. This set of options are especially useful when working with creative layouts. When you need to create a deconstructed layout or to make elements stand out from others. And it's quite trendy these days. In the Responsive tab, there are settings to define the visibility and alignments based on the Uncode breakpoints. For example, it's possible to hide a column when you're on desktop, tablet, or mobile. Let's hide this column on tablet, as it's possible to see the column is visible on desktop and mobile, but it's hidden on tablet. On tablet is hidden, on mobile is visible. Again, if I switch on tablet view, the column is hidden again. Let's get back to the normal desktop view. In the Animation tab, there are the setting to define an animation for the column. Let's try to apply a zoom-in effect to the column. The animations certainly make this page attractive for the visitor. In the Extra tab, there are various options, such as the Custom Link. This is a link that can be applied to the whole column. For example, useful to turn a column into a banner. The Sticky option which allows you to lock the column inside the row when you scroll. And the shadow and border radius options that we are going to test now. 
save the module and close it. Amazing, here's our border radius and our shadow. Remember that in each top level row, you can insert an inner row. For clarity, I delete one of our three columns. I insert an inner row. As for the main row, it's possible to create internal columns that will host the content. This way, you can create columns inside the main column container and create advanced layouts. And with that, we've reached the end of this exploration of the main rows and columns options. Remember that to better visualize what you are creating, it's possible to activate the safe mode. This option makes elements, controls, and page grid system always visible when working with a front end editor. I enable and disable this option. Please note how the controls and grid system becomes visible. Thanks to the combination of these options, it is possible to create any possible or impossible layout, like the ones you see in our demo. Now it's your time to create the perfect layout for your site.